course, this training course, I felt it is important that we just visit each other and see exactly what you are doing. And I'm delighted that I was fortunately invited to come and be the <coughs> guest of honor for this opening. To me, I think radiotherapy is one of the often neglected but critical areas in our hospitals, in our health care delivery systems. And I'm so glad that you are now putting up to an appropriate pedestal the burden of cancer in our countries is growing all the time. More and more cancers are being found, some associated with HIV, and we know that radiotherapy helps. We know that if it is caught at the right time, it helps. But we know that it must be done in a very safe manner, with good quality personnel who know exactly what they're doing so that it is safe and it is appropriate for the patient. So I'm glad you've got this course, uh, Dr. Ed Lovell. And I'm glad you have invited the experts here to come and be part and parcel of lecturing to already very sensitized people. So this is good for us as Africans. It's good for Zimbabwe. And uh, I would like in the same breath just to welcome you all to come to Zimbabwe. I'm happy that in the last few years we have seen a very steady improvement in a number of countries in terms of access to radiotherapy in our countries. And a lot of our countries in Africa uh, do not have any radiotherapy at all in country. I'm told only half of the 54 or so countries do have access to radiotherapy. So those who do have it, please make it safe, very safe, and upgrade it uh, so that it is of real quality and worthwhile for our patients. And I'm happy that in Zimbabwe, the government has been retooling our public hospitals and funding the procurement of new linear accelerators and brachytherapy equipment without donor support. Further, in this country, another center came up from the private sector and we're pleased that if you have government, private sector complementing each other in terms of radiotherapy, that goes a long way. Similar stories are emerging in several other countries in Africa and I've been made aware of advanced plans where our neighbors in the north, and I'm glad that Zambia is here, they are establishing six new centers across their country. And that's something to applaud, and I hope you can help me. <laughs> but as you do so, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and all the other countries here, just watch out. Because these equipment are extremely sensitive. And if you do not have the expertise, if one little tube breaks, you have to invite a whole lot of people, experts from Switzerland, from, to come and fix. And then they'll come, they'll look at it and say, yeah, it's broken. We need to order another one. It will take us four weeks but we need 10,000. <laughs> so we have to look for 10,000. Then it comes. Six months later, something breaks. Oh, fly us in. And you have to fly them in. And they look at it again. Oh, yes, now we need to resurface it. Take you five weeks. So watch out for those things and try as you get this quality, how can you also improve on such matters for us? It's really a big hindrance, a big one. Some countries now insist that we have contracts where the experts or the companies that make this actually bring them and service them. When they break down, they come themselves and 
at all sort of a sort of insured cost. So let's look out at this, those contracts. Let's be a bit more aggressive as we sign these contracts. And I can assure you that uh, the experts here will support you because that is why they are here to advise us on some of these matters. We need to establish strong governance and quality management systems for our centers in order to enhance quality service delivery whilst protecting patients and workers from the risk posed by the technology and ensuring that the economic lifespan of the machines can be reached. So if you are not very well trained, it's easy to, to damage the equipment. So we must have that quality, that training, due course. I'm glad that as a country, we've been making a steady improvement on the manpower front due to the partnership with the University of Zimbabwe College of Health Sciences, resulting in the training of radiation oncologists and radiotherapy technicians, normally called radiographers. Further, we eagerly await the first crop of medical physicists that is due to graduate from the National University of Science and Technology. Many countries are faced with challenges of having equipment they cannot operate. So it's just put on you. And I've said this again, and this is being said again. So it's a big issue uh, that we must be able to address. But with those few words, I want to officially open this very important uh, training course for, uh, for um, uh, the regional quality management in radiotherapy. And I wish you well, and I really look forward to the results that come from this particular training. Yeah, well, sure. I thank you.